Greetings vacuum enthusiasts and welcome to another unboxing and review of a VacLife product. Now previously I used this particular hand vac and really enjoyed it mainly because of this fantastic brush roll right here, great for picking up dog hair. So you can go back in my playlist and see all types of videos using this particular hand vac. But let's move on to the next product that they just sent me today. So this is uh, their stick vacuum, and it's got some interesting features. So let's unbox this and see what we have. Now this is the model VL732. Let's see if I can figure out how to get the box open <laughs> without destroying everything. I always like to try to preserve the contents as much as possible. First thing out of the box, we have the user manual. We can take a closer look at that a little bit further in the video. And we have a quick start guide. Wonderful for people who <laughs> don't want to take the time to read a fairly short manual. I mean, there's not exactly that many pages. And of course, this information you can, I'm sure, download in a PDF format online at their website which is vaclife.com. Get kind of a little paper card right here, it says vaclife on it. Okay, first out of the box, we have a tube, an extension wand. Let's see, does this click all over the place? Oh, yeah, many, many positions. Okay, you've got a lot of different positions here and this will extend. So let's see, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, 10, 11, and it looks like about 11 positions or so. And next out of the box, we have this crevice tool. Looks like it has positive clickage and it should fit into I guess yeah like like this right here all right so you can certainly have that if you wanted some additional length otherwise I normally hook the crevice tool directly into the body of the machine Next out of the box, we have a dusting brush. Now I've seen dusting brushes like this before, and it's certainly nice to be able to see them again. So a lot of bristles, very wide, stands up by itself. It's good, I guess, for large debris, you know, debris spread out in a, in a large area. All right, next out of the box, See, do I need to take another piece out here? Take the foam out? Yes, I gotta take the foam out because what looked like some other type of small piece was indeed the power nozzle itself. So I have tested a lot of stick backs on my channel, especially in the last uh, year or so, but I have yet to test a stick back that has this type of a brush roll. So you have stiff, it might be a little hard to see, you don't have to zoom in here. You have stiff bristles right here, right? And they, they're circular, they go all the way around. And, you know, it's kind of like a helix type. But this is a soft kind of foam brush. And that is somewhat unique. But uh, however it is, I have not tested a stick back with a solid foam type of brush roll uh, at all. So I can't wait to actually try that out. I'm sure it's gonna be fantastic on bare floors. Let's see, what else do we have here? We have a filter. And I believe that's, that's washable. I thought they had a picture of it here somewhere. We'll have to check that and make sure. And what fell out of the box was a cleaning 
brush and blade. So these are fairly typical. So it has some bristles here. And it also has this type of a hook that does have a blade section right in there that's sharp. Good for cutting hair off. Let's get the main body out here. All right. I do like red, my, my favorite color. I like vacuums in red. My wife uh, kind of goes for the blue. So that's how you would empty it. And my guess is, ah, so your main cyclonic interior assembly comes out by just simply twisting. It's, that's pretty simple. And you have another filter inside. So they give you two filters. Okay, let's put that back together. That just seats in. And this, there's a spot, there we go. And yep, that twists in and then seats properly. All right, so obviously we're missing a battery, which is in here somewhere. A red battery. <laughs> How about that? Okay, so here's the battery. And that certainly is shapely and stylish. Looks like it's got um, some LED indicators for the uh, battery life. And let's see, can I read anything on it? It says um, rated parameters, 25.9 volts, 2200 milliamp hours, and the power is 56.98 watt hours. All right, that should, see, does it slide in? Okay, great. And it looks like you have a button here to push to release the rear. So it, it kind of like goes in a little bit of an angle and then slots down like that. Okay, fantastic. Do we have any charge? Oh, we do. All right, a couple of lights right there. We have a charge. And let's see what else is in the box. See, I wonder if this is mounting equipment. Okay, I think we have some mounting equipment right here and we need the charge adapter, of course. And that's, that is all that's in this box. That empties out the box. So let's see the charge adapter. Hey, it's in a font size that I can actually read. <laughs> I don't need my magnifying glass. Output is 31 volts at 500 milliamps. So it'll probably take a few hours to charge, you know, which, which will be typical. So I wonder, you know, I bet this actually mounts some tools. It's got a, it's got a slot here. I mean, you can obviously, you know, you, you know, put some screws in here and here and mount it to the wall, and then you'll have the unit probably slot in like this. Of course, it'll be all connected up. Um, and you can put what uh, this in here. Let's see, how's it go in there? One way or another, it goes in there somewhere, <laughs> somehow. One way or another, you can probably store uh, some type of accessory or tool in here one way or another. Obviously, I'm not... Uh, doing it right. Oh, is it? Oh, it goes in sideways. Okay. All right. Well, hey, good enough. So you can store your tools sideways. Let's see, is it go in? There you go. There. So obviously you can store the unit um, and you can, you know, uh, have this as a wall mount, but then uh, you'll store your tools in here as well. So everything can look nice up against the wall if that's, you know, where you want to store your stick back. See, I don't think I have anything else. Nope. I can put some of this back in the box. Make some space here. All right, let's lean that up a little bit. 
Okay, as I'm actually reading this box, some of the features that you see is a brushless motor up to 82,500 RPM, strong suction up to 25 kilopascals, and I believe that would be 100 inches of suction if you would convert it to that standard, a large capacity battery up to 45 minutes runtime, that's you know, probably gonna be on uh, its lowest power, and three layer filtration system, 99.97, uh, filtration uh, percent efficiency, uh, one year warranty. And as we did figure out, I did have the occasion to go and contact Backlife and to talk with their service department and their response time was absolutely fantastic. So here's more of what's on the box. It says six in one cordless vacuum cleaner. Here we have three suction speeds, um, all-in-one LED display, LED headlights. That's really great to have to have headlights. I love um, I love headlights on vacuums. You don't have to turn the lights on. And one-click dust button release. Uh, it's got a cordless design, obviously. Uh, Self-standing design. Ooh, we'll have to test that. Adjustable extension wand and dual mode charging. Hmm. Oh, I guess that means that, and I, I have some of the uh, stick facts that do this. So that means that you can charge this unit, you can charge the battery without it being installed on the head, uh, and you can also charge the battery while it's installed on the cleaner head. So believe it or not, situations arise where that's pretty handy to be able to do especially when you have as many stick facts as, as I do. Now I notice right here, it says high efficiency turbo brush head, it says suitable for deep clean uh, the hard floors and carpets. And it says it has an independent motor. Um, and in their literature it says, for picking up trash, provides extra power for picking up trash because it has an independent motor. And here's a picture of the uh, illustration of the built-in LED headlights. Backlife claims that this particular stick vac will stand up on its own. Let's see, how about we test that? Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Look at that. Did you, did you hear the click? Here we go. Down here. Yep. Stands up on its own. I'm not holding it. And it's... That is fairly stable. It is. I mean, for, for a top-heavy stick vac, <laughs> that is a great party trick. Yep. I am not holding it. And... It even has a little uh, foot illustration down here on the power nozzle to let you know you can drive it around, right? You do your thing, and I don't know, the phone rings, something happens, whatever it is, there you go. <laughs> Fantastic. I do like the fact that VacLife actually prints something on their wall wart that says, what their machine is. It doesn't have the model number on it, but I have so many of these. I had to go and have my wife print some letters on these things because in many cases, it's, it just looks like this and you don't remember which one goes to what. So that's wonderful. Thanks, Backlife, for actually printing that on your charge adapter. So let's go ahead and charge this stick back up. And notice that stands up by itself. And when that's done charging, we'll come back and do some pickup tests. Sometime later, the batteries are fully charged in this VL732. Just like so many other stick back models, once you activate or depress this trigger, you don't have to hold it. So that's, that's great. That's a typical feature these days. So, as far as the speed control, hmm, looks like it's got a switch, but 
it doesn't push in. So it's just capacitive touch. Also, you have uh, feedback lights that are right here on the front. So turn it like this. All right, its default value is the middle speed, medium speed. It's all the way up. That's low. And then of course, medium, high. So that's low. And the default speed is medium when you turn it on. So it does not remember last speed position. So we had it on high. If I activate it, it comes back to medium. Okay, normally I run all my stick vacs on high speed, but because this has such an unusual brush roller on it, it's possible it may actually take off on the carpet, but I will try it on high speed first. So as usual, we have dog food, oats, and rice. Let's try, let's try the rice first. Here we go. All right, Ooh, that's grabby. All right, that is high speed. Yeah, it just, it just missed that. That was it, just, just one. Okay, here's the oats. All right, seemed to have a little more difficulty with the oats. Wasn't bad though. So here's the dog food. This is obviously large. <laughs> so I think for the first time, seriously, in all my stick fact testing, we have a really good, easy, clean sweep. <laughs> There's more stuck in there with, with the dog food. It's an exceptionally large particle. And a lot, of, a lot of machines have difficulty picking up something this big. So this is our dog, Rosie's actual dog food. And this type of brush roller was able to pick it up no problem. The rice, almost a total clean sweep, and the oats, usually machines don't have too many problems with oats, almost a complete clean sweep. Okay, so let's go over there and try the equivalent of, say, low pile fibrous material. We have some sand and we have some baking soda. Um, let me try this on medium, its default mode first. And if you happen to listen carefully, as you increase the speeds on the machine, the suction and airflow increase, but the brush roll speed decreases. Oh, look at that. We had, <laughs> we actually had one uh, piece of dog food rattling around in there. Okay, we'll, yeah, we'll put that there. All right. Here we go. Default speed. Ooh. That goes, that goes forward. That is pretty grippy. Yeah, it just came right up. It's just gone. No challenge for it at all. Sand. Yeah, so, you know, this is recorded in 4K, and you can see there's just nothing left. So that's on just the standard default speed. Yep. And we have a piece of dog food that made it in there. We will end with the bare floor tests, which is, to be honest with you, exactly what people buy a machine like this for. So we have sand, flour, baking soda, oats, rice, and we'll have some dog food in there. I will run this on high. All right, here we go. That was easy. That was easy as well. Oh. They, it skipped a little bit. Did I get that? Or went off camera. 
Get that piece. Get that piece. Come on, you can do it. <laughs> All right, so. It shot some out. So that's what we have. And I've given it a chance here. I'll try it again. All right, there we go. So a couple of tries, but this is concrete. So it's a little different than carpet. That was easy. Oh, it smeared it a little bit. Let's crank it up. Yep. So whether medium or high, it still has a little difficulty getting some of the, uh, some of the flour out. Let's see what it does with the finest stuff, the baking soda. I'll put it on high again. Yep. All right. So looks like everything's pretty good, near perfect, except for the dog food, because in this case, if you have a really, really hard floor, then you can get hard particles that actually bounce back and forth between the nozzle itself and the floor. And it has difficulty trying to figure out how to squeeze something like that in here. I mean, that's, that's literally what has to happen. And if you needed to remove the brush roll, you have a little switch right here. This part comes out and the brush roll lifts out. And you can see, it looks like we have one piece kind of rattling around in there. Otherwise, everything else is clean. And you would go and obviously clean this. Um, I'm guessing that this can probably be washed because, to be honest with you, it looks like it is all washable material. So I don't really see, I don't really see why you couldn't. I mean, this appears to be all be uh, some type of uh, plastic and fibrous material that can handle water. So I, I don't see an issue with that. And then obviously when it dries, don't put it in wet, you would reinsert it. You've got a, a little bit of an a, alignment right in here. Let's see if I can't figure that out real quick. There we go. That slots back in. And I always get this like upside down here. Let's see if I can get it, get this right. Ah, is that, is that it? I get, there we go. And then you just click. Ta-da! Okay, so overall, I really do like using this machine. And because of this brush roll, and again, this is the first time I've used uh, this type of brush roll, and it's, it's done very well in, in certain specific environments. So I really do enjoy it. But stay tuned for more tests with this because we have the, the, the passive, the static tests in there where we do airflow, suction, particle emissions, uh, brush roll RPM, so on and so forth. And then, of course, I'll have my wife use this, and you'll have a whole house carpet cleaning with it. Thanks so much to VacLife for providing the test sample. Until next time, happy vacuuming.